Greetings, and welcome to Etzheim's weekly podcast, recorded live in Richardson, Texas. We invite you now to join us for one of our synagogue's Shabbat messages. All right, can you hear me? Hallelujah. It's not really technical difficulties. It's just God revealing to his people that power belongs to God. We can't trust in things. We can't trust in our own abilities. We can't trust in our own thoughts about things. But we must. It is of the utmost importance that we understand that power, that might, that strength, that glory belongs to the Holy One. Amen. And so I'll start off with some scripture. And it's going to come from Isaiah as the Holy Spirit gave to me. And I'll read it to you. This is Isaiah 46, 40, 52 actually. And I'm going to just go into 53 because it, it's the chapters kind of break up what God is trying to say to his people. So it's 52 and 13, and I'm going to keep reading. Depending upon your version, it could be different. It says, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently, and he shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished at his appearance, it was so marred more than any man, and his form more than sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations the kings shall shut their mouths at him for that which had been told them they see. And that which they had not heard shall they consider. Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? I'm going to stop right there. And that's the question I have for anyone hearing the sound of my voice. Have you believed this report? Has the arm of the Lord been revealed to you? I think the immediate response to anyone that says he's a believer in Messiah would say, absolutely, I believe that. Absolutely, the arm of the Lord has been revealed to me. But when I look at this, it makes me think of when there was 10 spies went out. And when these 10 spies went out to spot the land, the majority came back with an evil report. The majority came back with these thoughts that things were impossible, that what God said couldn't happen. So once again, I'm asking you, have you believed this report? See, I, I, I see the reality is, is that many of us haven't believed it. We believe in Yeshua, but we don't believe in the words that he says. See, the two witnesses that came back with a good report saw the same things that the other eight or ten. Do you realize what I'm saying? The two saw the same thing. Some of us see mountains in front of us and we're finished. And others of us see mountains and they see the power of God. It's different. It's two different perspectives. You can believe on Messiah for salvation, but you can't believe Messiah to deliver those things out of your life. There's some of us in here who are addicted in, in bondage. Some of us are holding pains and hurts and being weighed down and bowled down by these things. Some of us are afflicted with sicknesses that can be stripped right out of your lives. But have you believed? Has his arm been revealed? Do you know what his arm being revealed means? You see, along the wilderness, there was these events happening, and the judgments of God happened all in Mitzrayim or Egypt to get the people out of that place. That was the arm of the Lord being revealed to the people, so they should have believed the report. So you can believe the Messiah for being resurrected from the dead, but you can't believe the Messiah from resurrecting the broken relationships in your family. 
You see, have you believed the report? Has the arm of the Lord been revealed to you in power? Don't you know how powerful he is, or is it just something you read? They had the commandments of God, but did they have the faith to believe in the God of the commandments? See, I'm speaking to people because I know about this. I know about beginning to major in those, those other things. I, I know about becoming, I was so zealous for the Torah, but I became exponentially weak in faith. And I begin to get smashed. See, some of the things that are happening in your life for God wants you. See, who allowed the temptations in the wilderness? Why did he allow them to hunger? Why can't you see what God's trying to do? He wants to know, do you really believe him? Will you believe this Messiah is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Or is he just only doing things back then like that? Why aren't we seeing the power of God move? Do you believe that the gifts of God don't work anymore? Oh, I know this isn't what you expected, but I'm not concerned about what you thought. I'm concerned about what God made me do. He made me take what I wanted to say and throw it to the ground. And he says, I want them to know who I am. I don't want them to read this book and have this wonderful relationship on paper. But he wants you to have it in reality. He is the God of now. He is the same. There's someone right now who can, get, can get be made whole and healed right now just from believing what God says in his word, just taking it by faith and believing it. So now you might think I'm going charismatic, but I'm telling you, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe it. I have believed this report. He's starting to convince me that he wants me to know him as he is. Not was, who was and is and is to come. Is current. So let me read a passage to you to get my point across. But not my point, what the Lord is trying to say to you. This is Psalm 62. And Psalm 62 is an amazing thought. The thought is, is God trying to relay something into the hearts of men. But men who believe God or believe on God don't actually really believe all the thing God says. So he has to repeat himself. He has to allow us to go through things. He has to allow us to get pushed in, prodded and pressed and put into positions that are uncomfortable. Cain is case in point. It says, truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. How long will you imagine mischief against a man? You shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall you be. As a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from the ex his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Selah. My soul wait thou upon God, for my expectation is from him. He is, he is encouraging himself in the Lord right here. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge is in him, in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us, Selah. Surely men of low degree are vanity and men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression. Become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God, I've spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power, strength, might belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth chesed, or mercy, loving kindness, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. See, in this text, the Creator is saying he's spoken twice. 
kind of like he spoke out of the mouths of those two witnesses. He had two witnesses. And he spoke twice from their lips. But the people bade stone them because the image of the things that they saw were greater than God. There's a scripture in the Bible when it says God looks down upon the earth and the inhabitants are like grasshoppers. But the, the other witnesses, when we get into circumstances that enlarge itself against God, we look at these things and we become like grasshoppers in their sight because we're not looking from God's perspective. We're not listening and abiding in his word. We're not moving by the power of his spirit, but we're trusting in the arm of the flesh. This is why he says, has the arm of the Lord been revealed? You see... If we want revival, we're going to have to stop trusting in the things that the world trusts in to see God move. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because we have meetings and we come up with plans and schemes. It's going to happen because men get alone with God and seek his face and do the things that he says. But I thought it says in this scripture right here, we're going to go to it. I thought the gospel was the power of God for salvation. I thought the gospel had power. But do we actually believe that report? And this is what got brought to me by God. This is what changed my perspective. This is what he burned in me when he started revealing something to me that I didn't really believe the gospel was the power of salvation because I wasn't giving it. I wasn't doing it. I was seeing what was wrong but was never willing to give the solution that had the life. It's powerful. We don't need to have anything but do what he says and it'll happen. There's a minister named Reinhard Barnke. And one time he was a, he was a little kid and he read the gospel and he, he decided, you know, I'm going to go out amongst the people and open my mouth and just see what happens. And you know what happened? Somebody gave their life to the Lord and he said he ran home to his father, who was a minister, screaming, it works, it works, it works. But some of us here don't believe it. Some of us don't actually think that people, God can move in power. Do you have a gospel? The Apostle Paul described a gospel, he said my gospel, and that's a, a, a point of contention with many people. This my gospel that the Apostle Paul was talking about is something that is personal. When you have a gospel, it's because you've received a gospel, because you've received salvation. It's something that's been, you've been gripped by it. You've had your own experience. Not this custom gospel. I'm not talking about the modern custom gospel where you can make it and change it according to your own desires. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about someone who's gripped by God whose God's gospel is alive in their lives. So that wherever they go, people see the light of God in their lives. You know Yeshua, see, I'm, I'm not teaching, just being, being honest, I'm preaching. Uh, you know Yeshua, wherever he went, it was this amazing thing that people came to know God. You know, he, he faced all kind of opposition because he was, he was the light of the world. Since I've been walking and believing in this in the last three weeks, I've seen three people come to faith. And it's not because of me. God forbid. It's because I now believe the gospel saves people. I actually believe that if we do what Yeshua says and not say we're disciples of Yeshua, but not walking like the master, not obeying what he says. For he said this through his apostle. This is in, this is in Romans chapter 1, verses 14 through 17. I thank, uh, let me get it. Ooh, I almost messed up on that one. I'm going to go 15. So as much as in, as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Messiah, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, unto the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And I ask you, do you believe this report? Has the arm of the Lord been revealed to you? If you've received the gospel, you ought to be believing on the gospel. You ought to be, you ought to be living the gospel. You must believe in the power of the gospel. It's a 
authoritative. It has strength. This gospel is powerful. We're looking at a nation getting led away and we're sitting around politically trying to figure it out. We're sitting around trying to isolate ourselves like this. We're sitting around doing everything but believing that the word of the master is the same power. He's the same today, yesterday, forever. It's the power of God. But everybody doesn't believe it. We don't. The apostles see a man with twisted legs. They don't have silver and gold. We, we, we're going to try to get them to vet the best surgeons on earth. See, we got to really look at this. I don't read the Bible and just accept that uh, we're going to be weak and powerless. You can keep that gospel. That's why isn't it working. Don't you realize why isn't it working? It's not working because the power of the gospel is not in the gospel anymore. We're just giving them words. We're going to get into that because the Apostle Paul, he talked all about excellency of speech without something in it to do something. That's what the world is looking for. They're not looking for you just with, we have the actual commandments of God. We have the actual scriptures from God. We have the actual feast of God. But if we don't give them the God that we're talking about, if they don't see something different and just see an outward structure of things that we're doing, what's the difference? This is what this is about. We've accepted a lie. We've accepted that God is weak. We tremble at, at, at difficulties. But I've seen Smith Wigglesworth, he's spoken to me as I'm reading him. When he's seen a difficulty, something, he, he enjoyed, he got excited when he saw something that said it couldn't happen. When we see it, we go, oh, no. We look at those, I don't want to have to pray for that person. It's an impossibility because the arm of the Lord hasn't been revealed. We don't like it. But I'll tell you, I've seen God do things that you can explain. And I see what happens in people's lives when God actually, when they actually get a relationship with him. And they know that he is able to be what they need. He's all things to all people. This is what Shaul was talking about when he was saying that. That doesn't mean he's all sinful things. He's all good things. When somebody has needs, he provides. He is able to do above, above all we can hope, ask, or think. I'm going to keep saying that. That's why a man like George Mueller can see the things happen in his life. Was he some special man? Did he have some special faith? If you read his books, he says he wasn't. He said he was a normal person, just like you and me. But what was the difference? He believed. And he put himself in positions to prove it. Okay. I've already asked this question. Do you believe the gospel? You're going to have to ask yourself, do you really believe it? Because I'm not sitting in here expecting not this congregation to be a light to this whoever, wherever we are to your family members, on the college campus. If you believed this gospel, if you actually thought that if people didn't believe in the God of Israel and put their faith in the Son of God, that they would perish, it ought to do something to you. This is what made Caleb or Caleb say, I'll take the mountain. Give me the most difficult place. Why? Because he already knew he was going to have the mountain. Because it was promised. Because God said, you're going to have the land. See, the children of Israel were sent in to judge a wicked people who were the sons of a, of a son who was cursed, and he had to, they were sent in to judge him, but God is merciful, so they had hundreds of years until the fullness of the iniquity got built up. Well, we're living in a nation where we're at the point where they're uh, openly rebelling and, and laying out idols and this, this enforcing strange flesh in, in public and they're, and they're beating down and they're overwhelming and it seems insurmountable, but it's not insurmountable. We have the answer. It is the gospel. It is God is the power. He spoke to you twice. How many more witnesses do you need? You have the law. You have the prophets. You have the gospel. You have Yeshua, the Messiah. Is he in you or isn't he? So what's the problem? What's the problem? That's it. It'll kill everything. Children of Israel cannot enter in because of unbelief. We trust in the wrong things. 
We're going to have an Oleg line that will be around the corner, but we'll have a prayer line that will be scarce and starving. You see that? We'll sit around and talk about somebody's issues, but we won't get on our face and cry out to God for them. During Christmas time, if you don't celebrate it, because we know this is not something we promote here, you, you, you will see people ranting and raving, but not many tears and brokenness of heart. There's a difference. There's a big difference. I'm calling in you, this because you, this time of month is supposed to, this feast is the, feast is, is the season of our joy. This is the time when you're supposed to be joyous. This is a shadow of when the lulav is getting waved and waving every kind of person from the east, the west, the north, and the south, and they're all getting brought up before the God of Israel, and they're getting brought into the presence of the Messiah, and the whole world would be observant, and it's going to be an amazing thing, but we're in the midst of the time where we're out to the nations, supposed to be spreading the truth, preparing the ground for this thing, so that we can, we can have something to rejoice in. We can have... We we can have sons and daughters in the world. We can have people coming into the kingdom. But do you believe that God still does this? Well, I can't do it. Well, you're not weak enough. There's no excuses. To be honest with you, I'm a weak man. I don't have any special ability. I have God. Don't you see the apostles? Why didn't he go get all the sages? He could have had Gamaliel. They said that, that, that almost time ended when Gamaliel died, but he didn't choose Gamaliel. Do you ever notice that David's mighty men were not the cream of the crop? That's a prophetic picture. You need to connect that. Don't you realize when he chose you, he, I'm not looking down on you, he chose you because the glory, he had to use earth and vessels that the excellency won't be of man, but of God. He's doing something, but are you willing to be filled with his message? Are you willing to be a light on your job? Are you willing to be hated? You see, you see the society, what they're doing? People are scared. Oh, now everybody's super angry. So we're on Facebook ranting and raving. But they're not moving in the power of God. You see, that don't work. Does God use Facebook? Yeah, he does. He does. People have get, get message and he works through um, modern technology. He does. But you can't trust in it. I'm speaking to you like this because somebody in here needs to be stirred. There's some people in here who need themselves this gospel. There's people in this room who themselves need this same Messiah. Why are you sitting there and the Messiah is willing? Why did that leper recognize and believe the report? The leper ran to Messiah and asked him, oh, if you're willing, you can heal me. And what did the Messiah say? No, I don't heal anymore. No, he says, I'm willing. Matter of fact, more than that, he touched him, which is a shock to me. I said, he touched him? But when he touched him, he, there was no more leprosy. Why did the centurion who had this great faith come and see this Messiah? Because he believed. According to your faith, be it unto you. Do you understand what that says? I'm not talking about limos. Well, I'm not talking about a billion dollars in jets. I'm not talking about trying to consume things on the lust of your flesh. I'm talking about according to your faith. God is a good God. If you have a need, he'll meet it. But people don't. What they because this is spiritually discerned, you have to know him. Do you know him? Do you know him? Okay. Let me tell you a quick story. I got a little time. I need to hurry up though. This is about Andrew Murray. There was a revival. Andrew Murray, he absolute surrender. It's a very powerful book and um, makes me squirm a lot. There was a revival in South Africa. And he, at the time, he was a, as a minister. But he was in a study. And something strange happened. An African woman asked if she could pray. Because you obviously you know, like in South Africa, there were there a lot of issues. And they let her pray. And when, they, 
when she opened her mouth and prayed, the wind, power of God came in. It was God validating that he's working through the nations. He's validating that there's no little or small people. And the man of God, the mighty man of God went in there because a commotion broke out. He went in there and tried to shut down God. And for a couple of days, he was actually resisting it until he understood this was God. He was the one used in the ministry during the revival. But what I'm showing you is that God worked through a humble woman who God put on her heart to pray. And, she, and, and he came in and started a revival. That revival came about because they were seeking his face. That revival came about because they saw the, the arm of the flesh was weak. He couldn't do the things that needed to get done. You can trust in Trump or you can trust in Yeshua the Messiah. It's either or. Can he use him? Of course. But are you putting your trust in him? You'll be a big mistake if you do. Are you putting your trust in you? Be a big mistake if you do. We are the circumcision who put no trust in the flesh. Circumcision is great, and under circumcision, it can be great. It's the circumcision of the heart. But I'm asking you, what are you trusting in? Why are you limiting God by what you see here? This more than 12 here. We could turn the world upside down if we actually believe it. There's someone in this room who's going to be used by God if they're willing to be used. Is there anyone in here who, who, who the eyes of Adonai can search to and fro in this room to find a person whose heart is, is perfect towards him so that he can show himself mighty on their behalf? I said that to, to, to some, some young men at the, at the sukkah where we were, and, and there was crickets. And then I said, I'll be that man. See? They don't believe the report. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm I got problems, brother, and I didn't ask you about you. He said, his heart is perfect towards him. That king was imperfect. But God says, I wanted to show myself mighty. See, that's the trick. That's the secret to someone getting their hands laid on and getting healed right now. That's the difference. The difference is between somebody who believes God, not believes in themselves to make it happen. And this is what was hindering me walking with God because I would see somehow, well, if I prayed, they're not going to get healed, like somehow I'm going to do the healing. It's the same thing when you see this nation and you see the condition it's in and you look at it and you see the insurmountable odds and you're not looking at God, you're looking at the things and this and that. You're looking at, well, we don't got as much money, we're doing this and that. He don't need your money. He can use it. But what he, what he does need is you to believe him. What he does need is for you to acquiesce, to humble yourself and say, God, without you, we can do nothing. Yes. The Messiah didn't have his own words, but who put it in his mouth? The Messiah said, uh, by, by myself, I can do nothing. But do we think like that? Do we, are we absolutely, totally dependent upon God, or aren't we? Well, he ain't going to show up. As much strength as you have, he'll let you exasperated until you become weak. I'm a personal testimony of that. That's what happens when you think you have something to offer and he decided to crush me just to show me he loved me. Because I can preach and preach and preach and teach and teach and teach and nothing happened. No one years, no one got saved. I mean, sermons a thousand times better than this. All kind of just worked out everything great and he wouldn't let nothing happen. The heavens were brass. Because I was all in me. Because he loved me enough not to allow us or me to be very fruitful. Because if he's going to allow you to be fruitful in the flesh, you're going to get corrupted. And you're going to get wicked. You're going to think it's your arm. This is why he would admonish Israel over and over when you get into the land and when you finally, you, you have all the things you have and you have all the good things I'm going to give you. Don't. But we do that. This is, this is why the American and the Western Assembly is as weak as it is. 
The moment we get something, we grow up and we get big. We get bigger and get bigger and we get big towers and we get like skyscrapers. We get giant skyscraper churches and, and synagogues. They become massive. There's nothing wrong with things being big. But somewhere along the long way, that big God loses his size. We begin to trust in the things he gave us. This is what God is talking about. He's trying to let everyone know, I'm the same. I'm right here. As a matter of fact, you want revival? Come unto me. Yeah. It's as simple as that. The other night, there was something that broke out. A big catastrophe. There was all kind of chaos going on. Someone had to run and get us, and, and it, was, it looked like the devil was having his day. It was astonishing. And I tell you what happened. But God. See, this God we have can go into the midst of a chaotic circumstance and go right in and flip things on its head. We were astonished, so astonished that, that, that someone in the midst of all of that made a confession of faith to Yeshua. But why? There was no arm of the flesh. Went in and go, well, we can't stop this. I got the Torah. I said, well, it says here, right here, yeah, but I can't pull that hard. You see, I use the words of God, but I don't rely on the pow my power and my understanding. It's God. What do you think draws a person to him? Just the truth or the one the truth comes from? You need both. I hope you understand what I'm saying. What I'm trying to do is get us to see that he wants a demonstration of power. See, there's, they don't care what we have to say. I hope you, you know that, right? Any of you who try to give the gospel or try to preach the truth to people, a lot of people just don't really care. They don't want to hear it because they, there's something else they need. They need the God to go along with the truth. They need him to manifest himself. And it doesn't have to be in some outward miracle. It, it has to be tangible what is for them to see and hear. It has to be powerful. That's what it was for me. That's what had to happen for me. I had to hear that there was a God who could love a wretched man. I couldn't believe it. It didn't make sense to me. A God who not only loved a wretched man, but you got to look at it like this. I want you to see a picture. And Isaiah describes this, this man, I read to you, who had no form or commonness. Even though when we see the pictures of Jesus or Yeshua, this is model. But that's not the case. He was a, said he was just like normal. But something had to happen to him. He got disfigured. Do you know why? Because man was created in the image of God, but man fell away from God, and he no longer reflects the image of God. He's disfigured. So the Messiah had to actually be, who, who, the man who knew no sin had to become a sin offering. He began to bear the image of sin. That's why he was disfigured. He, mar, he was marred. He stopped looking. He, he didn't reflect God. He reflected really what men look like. So when they were on this, when you see people mocking Messiah, all they're doing is mocking their own image. You see, they, they had a, he was disfigured because man no longer reflects the glory of God. They reflect their own glory like their master. They're after to have their own strength and their own power. And the body of Messiah, we can't fall into this trap. This trap of thinking that we can trust on these things. This just track or, or getting a label. You see all the churches, everybody got a label. But where's the power of God? That's funny that you don't see that in the scriptures. What we see in the scriptures as these men, we look at, if you look at the life of Yeshua and look at the life of the apostles and look at the life of people who even weren't apostles, you start seeing they look like Messiah. When you look in the lives of saints who've given themselves all to God, you start seeing this powerful reflection. And the people around him, even if you're sick, maybe he doesn't. There are some people he may not heal, but he, you might be so gloriously walking with God in your sickness, people can't understand. They say, what in the world's happening? Why is this person full of joy? Because the arm of the Lord is revealed. He, has, he knows someone loves him. You have something in you that the whole world should be, be, be drawn to. It's a light. 
Do you understand it? Don't you understand who we are in him? But why can't we live like it? Why? The source of our power. The source of our power is not flesh. The source of our power is a holy God. I'm speaking plain words. I'm not speaking anything excellent. I'm speaking just from the heart to let you know that I expect to see multitudes. I expect it because that's what he wants. Don't you believe what he says in his book? Has it been revealed to you that when you come up here, you are serving God? I know it. Men didn't know what he was saying. He didn't know what he was, what he was starting to speak and then tears ran down my eyes. He didn't know what he was saying, was speaking into me the same things that God spoke to me. He gave himself to God to be used. He's not just, well, let me just say this. No, God's speaking through him. He's using him. It's a powerful thing. It's important. But there's a resistance here, and I don't know if you're spiritual enough to feel that there is a resistance against the gospel in this room because it's powerful and it's going to change your life. And you're not going to be able to be the same. And that's the problem. Because we want the gospel of God. We want the salvation of Messiah. But we don't want to live this thing out. Oh, it's so difficult. It's not difficult if you're dead. It's not difficult if you died with him. I get convicted all the time with a young friend of mine who's over in the Middle East who, who pray to God that that certain things get worked out where we can get communication going, they hear the power of God moving. They're seeing people from foreign countries in the midst of, of, of chaos, in the midst of their lives being threatened, literally ripping hijabs off their head and praising God, which is literally could be a death sentence. Why is that happening? Why? Why won't it happen here? So the power of God is available. The power of God is for you. He is wanting to do things in your life. There's this fear. Every time you see something that you know you should be doing in the, by God, all of a sudden you hear something saying, oh, what if this doesn't happen? I can't pray for this person. What if I make it look bad? What, this, that's not God. It's not. You have to trust him. Don't you know what happens if you just believe him? You have a relationship with the creator of the universe. You don't have to feel nothing extra special. You just have to believe what he says and do it. Oh, I expected it to be quiet. I did. Because we are really clever. And I'm not talking about our Rabbi David. He's preaching the word of God. I'm talking about in this movement, people get real clever. People want to learn all the interesting facts. People want to learn all the little nuances. But people don't want to do what the master says. People don't have a goal to be like the master. Because the cost. But when you stop looking at the cost, like my brother Scott, who's told this to me, this is his word, Scott English, that it was Paul who saw the goal. Yeah. It was the goal to be like Messiah that made the cost something. How many of you like, have wanted something that was amazing to you? But it was expensive, but it didn't matter. You weren't even the cost. Okay, this is what it's going to take to do this, but this thing you had to have or this goal you wanted to accomplish, this degree you needed or this house you were going to build or this plan, anything it was, whatever the cost, you were going to do it because the goal you had to, to bring it to pass. Well, this is what we've been mandated with. He says, I'm going to, he says he, he was going to send power from on high and that we were going to become witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, in the uttermost parts of the earth. But why would he send power from on high for people who don't want to be witnesses? 
It's all here. This is the reality. This is why he wouldn't use me. Because all I could do was see what was wrong with everybody. Instead of trying to call him to the God that had all the answers. And that's why it's quiet. See, the power of God is not just for us to come in here and get good goosebumps and good feelings. But it's for the lost. The gifts of God, he will manifest them in a mighty way when we're out doing the things he says to do. He's going to keep hiding himself like he did from Israel. He says he hid his face. Why? Because they weren't doing what he wanted. But when you, went, you notice in those third world countries when they don't have all this leisure time to serve the flesh and there's all this pressure upon them, what are they doing? They're making severe choices. They're choosing what do you think would happen if they had that another one of those big parades downtown here and we didn't go with hate and came to preach the gospel? What do you think would happen? Did you think you would face something? What do you think would happen if when in school, when they try to teach your children something, somehow a way to serve the devil and clear, and you said no? What do you think would happen? What do you think would happen if we engage a society like to see, we see people in communist nations engage society? What do you think would happen? We're in the West. We're blessed. We don't know. We're, we're in a loud sea and state and we're falling away from God and we're serving ourselves and loving the, the creature more than the creator. We're not willing. I'm telling you the truth. This gospel is important. I didn't come. I'm being honest with you. I had to tell somebody. They were like, oh, yeah, I'm in the Torah. I said, let me tell you. Gamaliel's, Gamaliel's disciples didn't come for a wretch. It was Yeshua's disciples that came for me. I learned who God was through the preaching of the gospel. But why would we withhold the treasure? Why wouldn't we give what is needed? Some of you are like, I do give the gospel. I do, I do do these things. I do pour out myself. Okay. Lord, have mercy. Here it goes. Just a couple more scriptures. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 17. Chapter 1, verse 17 to, sorry, through 31. It says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom, words of wisdom, lest the, the, the stake or the cross of Messiah should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Hmm. Because we've experienced that power. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of the world? Have not Elohim made foolishness the wisdom of this world? Hmm. For after that, in the, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. There's another place in Scripture when the apostle described that the, the other believers in Messiah, they were highly exalted and accepted. But the apostles in him, they were the scum of the earth. Why were they the scum of the earth? Us. This message was burning through them. They were gripped by it. They knew that people needed it so much that whatever the cost it was, that people would know it. Do you know that this is the birthright of, I tell this to any Jewish person, this is the birthright of every Jewish person, is this calling to the gospel. This is what was supposed to be given to them at Sinai. They were to call hand to the nations. So go. See that? They were the cohans to the nations. Where did the nations fall short? Babel. What did he do to Babel? He dispersed them around the world. When Israel, what happened when Israel stopped obeying God? What did happen to them? 
got dispersed around the world. When the nations were all together, they probably looked very similar. And when he dispersed the nations around the world, they all looked different. What did he do to Israel? He dispersed the Israel all around the world. Now you got Jews and all these people, they look all different, but they're all from Israel and they're scattered. Now he's bringing them together. But what is this gospel for? He preached the gospel at this time to the scattered, dispersed people. Now he's bringing Israel back, but it doesn't stop that the message keeps going to the nation, but to the Jew first, also to the nations. But you have to believe it. This has to be the main thing. It isn't. I don't, it just not is. It is not. Oh. All right. Finally. I was going to keep reading the chapter, but I've been talking a while. I want us to understand something here. That that power that God wanted me to display is here right now. See, if you aren't sensitive to these things, you won't be able to recognize what's happening. What's happening is this, this shoe is moving into something powerful. It's moving beyond what it's known before. There is a fire breaking loose in the hearts of people regarding the lost. There's going to be a time when the prayer line will equal or be greater than the food line. See, we have to actually have an unction in us and understand that there's no empty words coming from this place. He's gathering people, but it's not unto ourselves. He didn't, he didn't deliver Israel out of bondage so that they can just be a people unto themselves. I know that's what the, some of the others think, but it's wrong. It was to gather people back to the creator. Because the one who allowed himself to be marred for us, that same one is the one who is the very image and the power of God. You see this? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says this, And I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom of declaring or preaching unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you save Yeshua Messiah and him crucified. And that's what he forced me to do. He forced me. Had a whole different, long, very nice message. But he says, you, I'm taking the excellency from you. I want you to come with a plain message to my body and let them understand they have a mandate. They have a mandate from the Holy One. You, shouldn't, you, shouldn't, you should be having his heart for the people you see in this nation that are just blind and lost. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, hmm. but in demonstration of the power of the Ruach, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Now this is the, the final portion. This is when I walk out in front. This is when I begin to look at the people. This is when I'm going to tell you a, a mighty secret to deal with your... <laughs> Everlasting Father, you made a promise that if anyone would draw near to you, that you would answer. So I pray right now that you would reveal yourself in her and to her and through her in the name of Yeshua. Every hindrance of that broken. Every thought captive and cast down and brought to an obedience to subject to the Messiah himself. O oh Lord, my King Messiah, reveal it. Reveal it in power and might. In the name of Yeshua, And you have it. That's it. That's how you get it. That's it. You believe what he says. I do. And then you walk in it. That's and you trust him. Yes. And he's faithful. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. That's it. Praise God. Everlasting Father, 
my sister says, I'll have that too. Oh, he says, and I'll give it. I am willing. Oh, willing God, now fill her with the fullness of your joy, the fullness of your son. Overwhelm her and rapture her. Strip away every hindrance. I bless you, Abba, that you will make her a mighty woman of valor. That's what she wants. I see it. She wants courage. So right now, in the name of Yeshua, I say be strong and of good courage. For you are more than able to preach the gospel, to live the gospel, to abide in him as he is. Hallelujah. Father, I guard her heart and mind now and reveal to her your perfect will. Place her in a place where you will draw as she lifts you up. Amen. Okay, reflect his life. Let's speak to those. Aveno Malcano. You're a father. You're a king. She says she wants. Oh, Lord, to speak. She wants to speak your words. She wants to speak your words and understand. Father, reveal to her that she just needs you. That you could put the words in her mouth. As you said, he promises that you put the words in her mouth. Father, put the love of God so overwhelming in her that it pours yes. out in power. She wants deep, deep. Oh, Lord, let us become to deep in her right now. I bless you, Lord. I bless you. By faith, I bless you that she would receive it in power. The fire of God. Yes. And that fire burns off all hindrances. I cast fear out in the name of Yeshua. He says, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Bless you, my sister. Bless you. You'll have it. Because he says, he will. He always has it. Thank you. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for my sister. I thank you for what you've done. You're drawing people into the place to know you through her. He says, I'd give you, remove the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. But she wants the love of God to be shed or spread abroad in her heart. She wants to be filled with that love. Oh, Lord, put the willingness and boldness with the humility and meekness. He said the righteous are as bold as lions. Every woman that came up here is bold to receive. And that's the same boldness he'll give you. And it will be tender, but it will be strong. And you should have stayed. Be filled. Be filled with the fire and trust the Lord. And he will do it. Every time. Every time you trust him, just remember he's faithful. Don't go by what you see. Don't go by what you hear. But trust the Lord. And he will do it. Commit your ways unto him and he will do it. I'll come down. I'm just like you. Let the Holy Spirit will go through us with fire and power. Oh, God. Alvenu Malkenu, our Father and our King. He wants the Holy Spirit to go through him with, with fire and power. Right now, in the name of Yeshua, I speak power of God to enter into their bodies, 
the power of God to enter into their minds. I pray that you would consume anything that's against this power. I pray that you would take away the dross and that you would, you would ignite him in the name of Yeshua. In the name of Yeshua, you're going you're gonna to have what you ask for because he is a good God. You know what he said? You will... We being evil know how to give good gifts to our children. How much more would the Father give you of the Ruach of the Holy Spirit for those who ask? And you've asked. So you receive it. And kindle it. Kindle it in His Word. Kindle it in His Word. You're going to have to be kindled in His Word. Be in His Word. You got a secret place, my brother? Stay in it. Go to that place. I know that you got a place. I just know it. You got to go to that place with him. And in that place, he's going to meet you. And when you come out of his presence, people are going to see God move to your life. Man. That's the power of God. He can use a weak man because that means God's powerful when we're weak. Embrace your weakness because his power is made perfect in our weakness. Oh, I thank you. Hallelujah. 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 And it's not for him only, but for the wife as well. One accord, same mind, same heart. Burn the gospel upon him and let it come out in power and upon them. Let their house be alive. Let their house be alive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Adonai. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Well, if that's it, I pray the Lord um, has done something with your heart today. And I pray you're challenged to have being like the master, the goal of your life. That's, the, that's, that's why I live. To be like my master. To be like 